Welcome to Ryan Watches a Movie. My name is Adam Patterson. With me today, we've got Kevin Rakestraw. Hey, Kevin. Hey. I'm also joined by Ryan Holes. Hey, Ryan. Hey. <laughs> yeah. You sound excited today. Hell yeah. You sound like you're having a good day. Oh. <laughs> that, was that was a boy. That was a boy. I swear, I go pretty in pain. Mm. <laughs> Thought you were and excited. Just puberty. Turn, yeah. Thought you were excited. <laughs> just turns out you're going through puberty again. <laughs> I, I might be. <laughs> my my boy's <laughs> been doing that a lot lately. Yeah, it's second puberty, dude. You didn't know about second puberty? It happens when you get into your late 30s. Oh, my God. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in to Ryan Watches the Movie, Kevin and I are challenging ourselves to find movies that Ryan likes in the hopes that we will reach a coveted 10 out of 10. You can join in on the conversation by sending your movie suggestions for Ryan to podcast at filmpulse.net or by sending me a DM on Twitter at filmpulse.net. If you like the show or even if you don't, be sure to check out the Frederick State Taxi Research Alliance website at curefa.org. Ryan, you wanted action this week. What movie did we give you? Braun Cell Block 99. Braun Cell Block 99. This came out in 2017. It's written and directed by S. Craig Zoller. I have a synopsis here. A former boxer turned drug runner lands in, in a prison battleground after a deal gets deadly. Ryan, tell us a little bit about Brawl and Cell Block 99. Uh, Vince Vaughn plays an icon, and it's after he's in jail the first time, he comes home and finds a way of his chain on him, and the funniest scene in the movie, he carefully dismantles the car, Without, without hurting himself, and apparently turns into a human. Dude, I don't, I don't know if he, I don't know if he doesn't hurt himself, but you do see Vince Vaughn just completely wreck a car with his bare hands. What, is, he, is he just like punching it? Is, is he punching no. a car? No, dude. He breaks the hood off. He punches the window, he punches the door, he works in the mirror, and when I, when I say Brent's gone off, the hood of the car is closed, and somehow he makes it come off, <laughs> and throws the entire hood. In the middle of the street. Yeah, it's like the bonus stage of Street Fighter 2. You just see Vince Vaughn destroy a car. I don't know why, but just the the thought of Vince Vaughn punching a car, just punching a car, is very funny to me. It's a great scene. It's funny because then he starts talking to his wife, and all he does is... Probably say, get it done. And then he goes the outside and he has a somewhat calm conversation about the fact that he's paying some other dude. So, anyway, after that, they decided then having kids and starting over a well refresh their family. And the kids, if they killed the movie concert 18 months later, and Vince Vaughn is back with his body, a drug running, but he, during the fight, he promised his wife it won't last forever. So then he goes to jail, and they call it medium security where he has some water freedom and all of a sudden some crazy guy he comes in and it turns out this guy is working with the 
Dracula that he lost money for, and the drug dealer eventually kidnaps his wife, and basically they get a boorishness, and the guy basically tells Vince Vaughn that there's another guy in prison, in a different prison, that needs to be killed or they're going to take his wife and cut the limbs off of the fetus but somehow it will remain alive and just be born and live life with the limbs. So Vitzvon suddenly decided to kill this guy. And first of all, I has to go to the other prison. So he just beats the shit out of a guard. And they throw this other mag on to go to prison. And he finds out the guy that he's after is in uh, Gen Pop. And he decides to get himself thrown in. The even tougher part of that prison by being shut out of some guards and some other prisoners. So after all that happens, he finds out that the guy that was killed is the guy that he worked with on the joint deal. Gone bad and in about they he kills everyone, including the guy they supposed to kill. And then the main prison guy comes to catch him. And he's like, no, I have to do some stuff first. And he does some stuff, which includes killing this guy and all his friends. And then the main prison guy comes in and shoots him in the face. And the movie's over. Oh, yeah, he rescued his wife and onboard job first. And then, and then he does. <laughs> so, all right. So, what did you. There's, there's a lot of setup. Yeah. That's my immediate thought. A lot of setup. There, there's almost like, like when you're watching it, they don't get into the, the combination of the movie until like an hour and a half later. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, at first I didn't understand what the main point was, you know, man. but then you realize that He's killing these guys, these bad guys. So what did you think of, uh, what were your initial impressions of Brawl and Cell Block 99? I, uh, I enjoy I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Mm. <laughs> but I didn't hate it. I was kind of confused. Confused, huh? But now, well, now shortly after I watched it, I like get the whole thing dawned on me, and I well, like it just takes a while to get there. A little bit of a slow burn, huh? Yeah, kind of surprised. I thought this was going to be far, far more in your wheelhouse. That sick, sadistic shit that you're into. <laughs> that brutal violence. That ultra. Uh, uh, I like it. I just thought it was a total while I get there. Too slow. Too slow for Ryan. Need, not, we need not more of that. Violence for you. Need more of that grisly, brutal, realistic violence. <laughs> now, if it was the violence that's in this movie, if it was that for like two straight hours, would you have enjoyed it more? You sick son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that means that would have been more action. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not enough action. To me, this movie, I, 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 li- I liked the pacing and I liked how they parceled out 
the moments of brutality. Like I, I thought that that because it was it was ultra violent. So when it did happen, it packed more of a punch because there were like long stretches of setup where they're establishing these characters and the rules of this world. When he gets to the prison, the the second prison, it's almost like a sci-fi movie. It's like this crazy, I don't want to say futuristic prison, but it's like underground. It's it's wild looking. Like it doesn't look like a prison at all. And yeah. it's literally underground. Yeah. And and you have Don Johnson as the warden who's just this, he's a real sadistic fucker too. But him and Mitch Vaughn, they're both, like, they don't say much. Like, they they do what they have to do, and that's it. Yeah. I, I really love the writing and the dialogue in this movie. I think that S. Craig Zoller is a really great writer. And all, all with all of his movies, he's got really snappy, smart dialogue that's kind of injected into these exploitation films and i think that's one of the reasons i like his movies so much now what did you think keeping with the brutal fucked up violence what did you think of the action moments i thought they were pretty cool so looked a little uh not real mm. But, like, I knew I got that just a bit. And that was in my head. I was like, man. What did you think of... Fuck that guy. <laughs> what did you think of the scene when he when he smashed that guy's face into the ground and then just kept dragging his face? Uh, that was pretty awesome. In fact, <laughs> it was good. I don't like. <laughs> Vince Vaughn smashes this guy's face on the ground and, like... I can't remember if he like steps on it, but he just yeah, yeah, he likes when I curb something. And, and he's like holding the guy. I think maybe maybe he's holding him by the leg, or I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen this, but he continues to just drag the guy like slowly. Like he'll drag him and then stop, then drag him and stop. And you just see a close up of this guy's face just being destroyed by the pavement. Hmm. It is. Uh, it's very grisly. Very, very disturbing. Mm. Is it uh, safe to say Ryan's favorite part? Is that your favorite part, Ryan? That's right. The core part was probably the best for me. The what when part? He, when he ripped off the hood. Yeah. Like, I've, I've never, like, I was running a thing in my head how hard that would be. He literally ripped the hood off the hinges. When it's on the guard, totally shot. Before we continue, I should say that we picked this movie for Ryan way before the whole Vince Vaughn president thing that occurred this week. Yeah. I, I just want to note that. Although I do think that the whole, that whole thing is ridiculous and should have been a non-discussion, but the internet. So what do you, well, Ryan, what do you think about that whole thing? With Vince Vaughn and the president there? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let it go, but we, we can dive into it a little bit if you want. What are your feelings on Vince Vaughn being a you know, big-time Republican? Uh, I don't even know what happened. <laughs> he, there, was a, there was a picture, a picture of Vince Vaughn shaking the president's hand. He went, he went out of his way. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. My, my life for my leg for Vince Vaughn just trying. I mean, may, I, I already knew that Vince Vaughn was a Republican, like a pretty big Republican. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't surprise me at all. I, I wasn't surprised. I mean, I didn't know for a fact that he was a big Trump supporter or anything. And maybe he's not even a big Trump supporter. Maybe he just he saw the president and wanted to shake his hand. I mean, I guess... These days, you pretty much have to be a giant Trump supporter to risk getting anywhere near yeah, him. Go out of way fucking touch him. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to touch him, even though it was the president. I mean, it, for me, it doesn't detract from the the roles that he's in, the movies that he's in. 
maybe I think a little bit less of him as a as a person, but it's not going to prevent me from going to see a movie with him in it. Yeah. I still love Swingers. I still love Made. I still love this movie. And I just because <laughs> he has some kind of weird beliefs, I'm not I'm not gonna hold that against him. Maybe boy can feed me. Why what the whole thing with S. Craig Zoller movies is a little confusing to me. Kevin, do you know anything about the kind of stigma around his movies? Have you have you heard any of this stuff? I mean, I mean, isn't isn't he kind of a? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, it seems like I don't know. I his, don't know enough about the dude. I, I mean, he's seen one of his movies. His movies have been sort of labeled as like right wing, like right wing favoring movies. I guess maybe his movies appeal to a right wing audience. And I don't know. I mean, his last movie dragged across concrete had Vince Vaughn and Mel Gibson in it, but I, I, I don't know. I just, I don't really see. I don't really see that in his movies. It had more to do with the fact that been the people that are in it. Because if you're saying this movie appeals to the bright wing people, I'll no bright wing at all. And this appeal to me at least a little. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what his like personal beliefs are. It seems to me like he just seems to really love these like 70s exploitation films and wants to put a modern spin on them i i don't i think that he said before that his movies don't have any kind of like political subtext to them or anything but i i don't know i mean bone tomahawk i really can't see too much in that movie and maybe a little bit with dragged across concrete but Still, I don't I don't feel like that's a movie that would or should necessarily appeal to like alt right people. It's about two crooked cops who get their comeuppance. That movie's quite long too, and I, I don't know if like the if that crowd can manage to yeah, sit through. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, it's, um, Dragged Across Concrete is two hours and forty minutes long. Jesus Christ. That was a long ass movie. It was great. But it was long. This movie is long, pretty long too. This is over two hours. This is two hours twelve minutes. No, that's why Ryan didn't like it. There you go. I was a little, yeah, I was a little concerned. That's a lot of setup, but at the end, I got the payoff. Too much setup, but the payoff was good. What'd you think of Vince Vaughn's sweet head tattoo? Did you ever see? The show Mr. In Between. No. On FX. I'm aware of it, but I never saw it. And I can't believe I only watched one or two. Does that guy have the same head tattoo? <laughs> I have no idea. I've never, I'm aware like, of the show. I've never seen it, so I don't know if he has a head tattoo or not. I'm wondering if these shows are based on all. Like the Emmett Vince Vaughn kind of, they're both like quiet badasses, basically. Mm. Like they, they don't let anyone fuck with them, but they're not like big hard asses. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I'm not really familiar with that show. I remember seeing some ads for it and thought to myself, that's not for me. Oh, well, yeah, I thought it might have been, uh, but like I said, I watched one or two. It turns out it wasn't very. Hmm, interesting. I, I'm seeing an article here from AV Club that says Park Chan Wook and S. Craig Zoll are teaming up for an ultra violent Western. Uh oh. That sounds. It's called Brigands of Rattle Creek. Well, hell yeah. Sign me up for that. That's right up your alley. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
If I knew about that, that'd be on my most anticipated list. I don't know if it's coming out this year, but damn. Mm -hmm. Now, Ryan, uh, you, I take it that you haven't seen any of this other direct, this director's other movies. You haven't seen Dragged Across Concrete or Bone Tomahawk, or have you seen Bone Tomahawk? No. No? From judging from this one movie, Brawl and Subblock 99, are you intrigued or interested in checking out his other, either of his other two movies? I would, but when he said there were like almost three hours, that turned me off. Yeah, Dragged Across, Dragged Across Concrete is a more slow paced cop thriller. Now, there is a lot of violence in it but yeah it's it's more of like this kind of there's a lot of comedy in it too but i think bone tomahawk is probably more your your speed that's also over two hours but there's a lot more action in that that's a western with kurt russell and patrick wilson if i remember correctly kevin you liked bone tomahawk i did yeah i don't know if i don't know the ryan in that one because i do remember that one being somewhat slow too it is it is it's a, it's i would say it moves along at the same pace as brawl and subblock 99 where it's relatively slow but there's like these kind of really intense moments of violence interspersed and then you have a big crescendo at the end and boy <laughs> the the yeah. end the, uh, yeah. <laughs> What happens at the end of Bone Tomahawk, I think, might be a little bit crazier than Brawl and Cell Block 99. It's pretty bonkers. Quite good, though. Uh, another another really solid script in Bone Tomahawk as well. Kurt Russell's pretty awesome in it. So we just knew it. what we need to do is find the, the, the sick, sadistic violence, that ultra fucked up stuff. But in like the, the, like 90 minute range 90 minute lower i j- i just thought of one that i'm gonna keep in my back pocket but i think i just thought of like a perfect one for him so i'll discuss that with you off the air but oh boy there, there's one i think might be a really good choice uh anyway before we give you your drum roll do you have any final thoughts about brawl and cell block 99 long shit up, but it pays off at the end all right Long st- uh, it's funny a little bit every now and then. Yeah, little bits of comedy sprinkled in there. Keep it keep it lively. All right. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan thought that decapitation was funny. <laughs> the, 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 the face the grinding deep. scene. And it's pretty great to see Ben's born in a serious role. Yeah, I mean, he's he's done some serious work in the past, but this is definitely... This definitely yeah, where, a, been? where has he been? Like, does he only do Greg Zoller movies? <laughs> he was in... Uh, That's the only person that works with him now. He was in Fighting With My Family. Oh, yeah, that's right. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, you liked it too, if I remember. Yeah, he wasn't in it that much. I mean, he had a small role. He's in that uh, Seaberg movie that's coming out, the one with Christian, Kristen Stewart. Okay. Uh-huh. Jean, about the... John Seberg biopic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably mispronouncing her name actually, but his name like a horror movie where he plays like a psycho <laughs> He's in psycho. <laughs> uh, he was Norman Bates in the psycho remake. Remember that? That experiment? Are there, are there, are there any, other ones? any other horror movies where he plays a psycho? Yeah. <laughs> Psycho too. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I feel like I don't remember that one. Maybe, may he he was in domestic disturbance. That, that I can't even buy bail when I'm thinking of man. Was he the? I can't remember if he was the bad guy in that. I have no idea. Yeah, I, yeah, I haven't seen that movie. No, I think he was. I'm pretty sure he was the bad guy in Domestic Disturbance. So that maybe that's the movie you were thinking of? Yeah, quite possible. I think he does a pretty good job of being a crazy psycho. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like I think it's too big to be just a normal everyday person. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he's that funny but like he has the like regular Jewish smile. I really he's, do I really do miss his comedy roles though like i think he was so funny and made i think that the just the rapport that him and john favreau had in swingers and made so good so many one-liners and made and swingers really that i just love repeating over and over all right ryan let's give you your drum roll what do you give brawl and cell block 99 seven seven out of ten Respectable. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I don't know how his rating system works. I don't know. I, I felt like he was leaning towards a seven on this one. Now, if you said like nine, uh, like if he, if he pulled a Star Wars and just shat on it for twenty minutes and then gave it a a seven, I I would be more surprised. It seems like the only problem you had with this movie, Ryan, was that it it took way too long to. Get that payoff. You when you wanted develop. more blood. It's like way too long to develop. Got it. Like I don't know that it's, that's why it's hard to talk about because like without watching and knowing all the backstory, like you don't fully understand why things happen. Yeah, I mean, uh I mean that's one thing that as Craig Zoller does is like he, he sort of crafts this very deep, these deep characters that, that each have a pretty, pretty rich backstory. And he'll even like spend time like in dragged across concrete. He spends like whole entire scenes with like tertiary characters that have like really no merit, like no bearing on the, on the overall narrative whatsoever just to develop that one minor character. So he he's very detailed when it comes to developing the the characters and making it a very rich story. And that's what happens here too. Like there's there's entire scenes that don't necessarily even need to be in the movie, but he puts them in there just to enrich the the characters. And I kind of appreciate that. I mean, I I think that with Dragged Across Concrete, he went a little bit off the rails with it, but for the most part, I think that he does a really good job. Now, next week, what are you in the mood for? Comedy. Comedy. Going light. Keeping it light, keeping it fun. I think we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. We'll, we'll definitely find something here. Do you have anything more specific? Like, are you are just... Keeping it really comedy. broad, just comedy, or are you looking for like, oh, an eighties, eighties style sex comedy, or like just any any comedy? Uh, I used to be a big fan of those uh, teenage comedy, like American Pie. Yeah, I remember. So <laughs> I guess one of them. Oh, okay, teen sex comedy. Oh boy. Watch out! All right. I think we could probably find one of those. It, I, it might be I, tough, I, actually, because I you've seen a lot of them. I think I have. Uh, I'm there. Hold on. <laughs> He's actually an expert. People don't know that. <laughs> uh, all right. Any any closing remarks before we end it out this week, Ryan? Uh, no. I think that'll do it. Thank you so much for listening. You can send us your picks for Ryan and questions to podcast at filmpulse.net. You can follow us on Twitter at filmpulse.net, at filmpulsekevin, and at my legs don't work. And if you have a minute, consider giving us a review on your podcast platform of choice. For Kevin Rakestraw and Ryan Holes, my name is Adam Patterson. We'll see you later. See you later.